Welcome to the tutorial. In some questions you'll be asked to find the volume of a prism and an equation you'll be given in your exam to work out the volume of a prism is this one, that the volume of a prism is equal to the area of cross section times by the length. And in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to use this equation to find the volumes of various prisms. Let's first of all understand what a cross section is. And the best way to do this is visually. So taking this cuboid, for example, if we shade this face here, the cross section of a prism is a flat face which goes all the way through the shape to the opposite parallel face without leaving any spaces around the edges, as you can see. Okay. And the length, which some people call the depth, is how far this cross section goes along the shape until it reaches the opposite parallel face. Okay, so in this case, the length would be five centimeters because the length between the front face we chose and the opposite parallel face is five centimeters, okay? So to find the volume of this cuboid, we need to find the area of the cross section. And as it's a rectangle, it would be equal to the length times by the width, which would be two times by three, which is equal to six centimeters squared. The units of length of this cuboid was centimeters. And so the area will be measured in centimeters squared. And then using the equation, we need to multiply the area of the cross section by the length, which as we said was five. And therefore the volume of the cuboid is equal to six multiplied by five, which is equal to 30 centimeters cubed as it's the volume. Okay. Now some prisms have more than one cross section. For this cuboid, we could have chosen a different face to be the cross section and got exactly the same volume. For example, had we have chosen this face? Well, first of all, you can see that this face goes through the whole shape to the opposite parallel face without leaving any spaces around the edges. And had we chosen this to be the cross section, well, we would have got the area of this cross section would be three multiplied by five, which is 15 centimeters squared. And then we would have multiplied it by what would have been the length in this case, which would have been two. So 15 times by two would have given us the same volume of 30 centimeters cubed. Okay. And to work out the volume, you could have actually chosen any of these faces to be the cross section of the cuboid and you would have got the same answer. Let's have a look at the next example. Work out the volume of the triangular prism. For this shape, we'll choose this face as the cross section. As you can see the way it goes uniformly through the shape to the opposite parallel face without leaving any spaces around the edges. Here, the cross section is a right angle triangle. So we can calculate the area by using the formula base times by height over two. So the area of the cross section in this example would be equal to three times by six divided by two, which is equal to nine centimeters squared. And to work out the volume of the prism, we need to multiply this value, the area of the cross section by the length, which in this case is eight to give us that the volume of the triangular prism is equal to 72 centimeters cubed. Okay. Now in this example, we couldn't have chosen any of the faces to be a cross section. Let's take this face, for example, and move it along. Hopefully you can see that it quite clearly isn't a cross section of this prism based on what we've defined before. Okay. Let's have a look at the next example. Work out the volume of the below shape. So this is called a compound prism because you'll see that if we draw a dotted line like this or like this, it's just a prism which is made up of two cuboids that have been joined together. So we could actually just work out the volume of this prism by working out the volume of each of the cuboids and then adding them together. But an even quicker way to do this is to work out the area of the cross section, which would be this L-shaped face, and then multiplying it by the length, which is seven centimeters. To work out the area of the cross section, we need to work out the area of both of these rectangles. So let's label these rectangles A and B. And to work out the area of cross sections for compound shape, sometimes it's easier to draw the front elevation or the front view of 
the cross section. So by looking at this diagram, we can work out the area of rectangle A as we have the length and the width. But to find the width of B, we need to find this missing side. And since the length of this side is nine centimeters and the length of this side is four centimeters, it means that the length of this side must be five centimeters, okay? Which we get from subtracting four from nine, okay? So the area of the cross section A would be equal to the length times by width, 10 times four, which gives us 40 centimeters squared. And the area of cross section B would also be the length times width, which in this case is two times by five, which gives us 10 centimeters squared. And so the area of the whole cross section would be equal to 40 plus 10, which is just the sum of areas of A and B. And that gives us 50 centimeters squared. And now we have the area of the cross section. To work out the volume, we simply need to multiply this value by the length, which in this case is seven centimeters. And therefore, the volume of the compound shape is equal to 350 centimeters cubed. Okay, let's have a look at the next example. Work out the volume of the trapezoidal prism. So for this question, the face we're going to choose as a cross section is this face. And since this is a trapezoidal prism, this face is a trapezium. And so we can calculate the area of the cross section by using the formula A plus B times by H over two, which is the formula for the area of a trapezium where A and B are the opposite parallel sides and H is the perpendicular height. So subbing the values in, we get that the area of the cross section is equal to seven plus four, which are the opposite parallel sides multiplied by the perpendicular height, which is 4.5 divided by two. Assuming that you can use a calculator for this question, this would give you 24.75 meters squared. We have to be careful of our units as this time the units are measured in meters and therefore the area would be measured in meters squared. And to work out the volume, we simply multiply the area of the cross section by the length, which in this case is six, which would give us a value of 148.5 meters cubed. Okay. In the next example, we've been asked to work out the volume of the parallelepiped. So for this question, the face we're going to choose as a cross section is this one. Since this is a parallelepiped, this face is a parallelogram, and so we can calculate the area of the cross section using the formula for the area of a parallelogram, which is the base multiplied by the perpendicular height h, okay? And this is equal to four, the base, times by two, the perpendicular height, which is equal to eight centimeters squared. And therefore, the volume of the parallelepiped is equal to the area of the cross section, which we've calculated to be eight, times by five, which is the length, giving us a solution of 40 centimeters cubed. And for these types of prisms, provided you know the perpendicular height and the length of the base, you could have actually chosen any of the faces as a cross section and you would have got exactly the same result. Okay. Let's have a look at the last problem, which is an application of what we've learned. Oil is poured into the tank below at a constant rate of 300 liters per minute. How long will it take for the oil to fill the tank? So in this question, we're told that oil is poured into this tank at a constant rate of 300 liters per minute. In other words, every minute there will be 300 liters of oil added to this tank. And so at some point it will eventually become full. And we've been asked to work out how long it's going to take. Now what you have to notice is that this tank will become full of oil when the amount of oil in the tank is equal to the volume of the tank. In general, Whenever you are looking at questions where you see a solid being filled with liquid, you should always be thinking about volume as the definition of volume is the amount of space occupied by a solid. So we need to work out the volume of the tank. But in this question, we haven't been told the name of the shape of the tank. But if we look at the shape of this face, for example, we can see that it's a quadrilateral which has two sides of unequal length that are parallel which means that this shaded face is a trapezium. And therefore, this three-dimensional diagram, which represents the tank, is a trapezoidal prism, 
which we know how to calculate its volume. So if we take this shaded face as its cross section, then we can calculate the area of the cross section by using the formula for the area of a trapezium, A plus B times by H over two. We have the lengths of the opposite parallel sides, A and B. And as we can see by these squares, this length four would be the perpendicular height H. And subbing these values into the formula, we get 2.5 plus five times by four divided by two, which gives us that the area of the cross section is 15 meters squared. And so to work out the volume, we need to multiply this by the length, which in this case is 3.5. And therefore the volume of the trapezoidal prism is equal to 15 times by 3.5, which is equal to 52.5 meters cubed. So now that we found the volume of the tank, we need to see how long it will take for the amount of oil in the tank to reach this volume if 300 liters of oil is being added every minute. Now, although liters and meters cubed are both units of measurement for volume, we need to compare apples to apples, if you like. So I'm going to convert this 52.5 meters cubed into liters so we can work out how many lots of 300 liters will be needed to fill this tank, which we know it's volume. We just need to convert into liters. So assuming you're familiar with your unit conversions, you should know that one meter cubed is equal to 1000 liters and therefore 52.5 meters cubed is equal to 52,500 liters, which we just get by times 52.5 by 1000. Okay. So now we know the full amount of oil that the tank can take in liters. We can work out how many minutes it will take for the oil to fill the tank by dividing this value 52,500 by 300 because 300 liters of oil is being poured into the tank every minute. And therefore the time for the oil to fill the tank is equal to 52,500 divided by 300, which is equal to 175 minutes. Now another unit conversion you should be familiar with is minutes to hours, but this unit conversion should be fairly simple since 175 is a whole number. So since there are 60 minutes in an hour, there'll be 60 plus 60 plus a remaining 55 minutes in 175 minutes, which is the same as two hours and 55 minutes. Okay. So I hope you found this useful. Keep up the good work and I'll see you in the next tutorial. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.